Hello again students and learners welcome to the brain box tutorials in this video we will solve mcqs related to english literature prose and poems uh, of icse class 10 your english literature exam is going to be held tomorrow and i hope you all have prepared properly so let us go through the mcqs of prose and poems and uh, then decide whether you have done the chapters properly or a quick revision is still left okay so starting with a first mcq what does the caged birds singing reveal about him option number a he is terribly unhappy b he prefers to sing rather than to fly c he is afraid to be free and last option he wants to be heard the uh, main aim of the caged bird uh singing was that he wanted to be heard so option number d is correct option second question why does the caged bird sing option a it wants to challenge the free bird b it must make others feel good c it wants to entertain people d it has only one way to express itself and this is the correct option because he only can sing his feet are tied and his uh, wings are clipped next one what was maya angelou's profession apart from being a poet the poet of the poem the caged bird so what was her other profession lawyer doctor activist or jury and the correct option is c activist now fourth mcq in the poem i know why the caged bird sings which is not an attribute of a free bird not an attribute number 8 dares to claim the sky and this is an attribute of the free bird he dares to claim the sky number b his wings are clipped number c he leaps on the back of the wind and last one he names the sky his own here option number b is not his attribute that is the attribute of the caged bird that his wings are clipped number 5 which of the following lines contains the same literary device as the following but a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams here the literary device metaphor has been used okay so let us see in all these four options which one is metaphor option number a all the variety all the charm all the beauty of life is made up of light and shadow and here light and shadow means ups and downs of life or uh, happiness and sorrow so light and shadow are actually metaphor uh, still uh, let us go through all the other options first uh, second one don't let the cat out of the bag this is an idiom number c today is monday tomorrow shall be tuesday no number d weak men uh, raise weak children so clearly option number a is a metaphor so option number a is correct now coming to number 6 what was the poem daffodils inspired by number a animals number b humans number c nature number d happiness and the correct option is c nature william wordsworth was also a nature poet coming to number 7 what does the phrase sprightly dance mean number a depressing number b lively and full of energy number c jumping up and down and number d slow and cautious and sprightly di- dance means lively and full of energy so option number b is correct option now coming to number 8 wordsworth saw a host of daffodils beside the river the lake the sea the hill and he sees the host of daffodils beside a lake so option number b is correct option now coming to number 9 10000 saw i at a glance identify the option in which the same literary device has been used now 10000 saw i at a glance has hyperbole hyperbole that is uh, exaggerating something that is called hyperbole now see if any of the options has hyperbole in it option number a the young flowers are blowing towards the east option number b catch a falling star and put it in your pocket option number c i wandered lonely as a cloud and option number d as he pulled the teeth out one by one now here uh, some kind of an exaggeration is 
seen in option number B that is catching a falling star and putting it in uh, the pocket that is uh, exaggerating something. So, this is hyperbole. Option number B. Now, number 10, daffodils is an eulogy to the restorative power of powers of nature. What is the meaning of eulogy? Number A, censure, that is uh, if uh, you say something against a person or against a thing. Number B, satire. Number C, humor. Number D, tribute. Eulogy means giving tribute to something. So, D, tribute to the restorative power of nature. Number 11, according to the poet, the color of the daffodils is white, yellow, golden, pink. Now, uh, the poet clearly say golden daffodils. So, option number C is correct option. Although the color of daffodils is yellow, but in the poem, the poet says that they are golden. Number 12. Why doesn't the patriot blame the people throwing stones at him? Option number A. He has committed a misdeed. Option number B. He is in high pain. Option number C. He knows that they misunderstood him. And D. He knows that he will be free soon. And uh, the correct reason or the correct option is option number C. He knows that they misunderstood him. Number 13. How did Abu Ben Adam speak to the angel? With humility, rudely, he didn't speak at all or boldly or courageously. He uh, speaks to the angel boldly because it is clearly written in the poem that uh, the, the deep sleep has made him bold. So, he asks, whatever he asks to the angel, he asks it boldly. Next one, the poem Nine Gold Medals by David Roth narrates a folk tale, a story based upon a real incident, an imaginary story, none of the above. Option number B is correct option, a story based upon a real incident. Number 15, in the poem Nine Gold Medals, the poet focuses on values like Number A, health and wealth. Number B, respect and wealth. Number C, compassion and cooperation. And number D, love and compassion. Now, you could be a bit confused between C and D. But here, compassion and cooperation are given in option C. So, we will choose option number C. And remember, in exam, when you choose the correct option, you write the option number and also write whatever has been written. For example, here, the correct option is C. So, you will write C and then write compassion and cooperation. Not only you will have to write the uh, option number, but whatever has written in that option, that also you will write always. Okay? Remember this. Number 16, death touches the spring of our common humanity. Here uh, the prose part starts. So, which word has been personified here? Death touches the spring of our common humanity. Now, which word has been personified? So, clearly it is death because death is touching something. So, death is the personified word here. Next one, the dead mother was... Number A, a very selfish woman. Number B, a bar owner. Number C, a gambler. Number D, a drunkard. And the correct option is D, a drunkard. Number 18, who was the oldest among the children? That is uh, in the story, the angel in disguise. Number A, Joe. Number B, Maggie. Number C, Kate. And number D, John. And the correct option is D, John. He was the eldest son. Number 19, choose the options that list the sequence of events in the correct order. Number 1, Maggie had now become a precious burden. Number 2, Joe decides to take Maggie home for adoption. Number 3, Mrs. Thompson wishes to keep the child for a day or two longer. And number 4, Mrs. Thompson prepares supper for Maggie. Now see, uh, first one will be number 2, that is Joe decides to take Maggie home for adoption. Uh, and here in the options A, B, C, D, we can see that B and C are the two options which starts with number 2. So, let us see after 2 which, which one should be correct, 1 or 4. So, after 2, 4 will be there that Joe decides to take Maggie, then 4, Mrs. Thompson prepares supper, then 3, uh, Mrs. Thompson wishes to keep the child for a day or two longer and the last one will be Maggie had now become a precious burden. That means option number C is correct option. 
Now coming to number 20, why did the little girl sell matches? Number A, to save up money to buy slippers for her grandmother. Obviously not. Number B, to earn money to help support her poor family. Number C, to earn enough money to buy a Christmas tree. And last one, to buy a roast goose. Clearly the option B is correct option. She wanted to earn money to help support her poor family. Now 21, how many visions did the little girl see on New Year's Eve? 2, 3, 4 or 5. Option number C, 4 uh, visions are correct. First one was of iron stove, second one was of goose, third one was Christmas tree and fourth one was her grandmother. Next, the little girl imagined the goose hopping down from the dish, waddled across the floor with carving knife and fork in its back, waddled straight up to the poor child. This happened when? When she lighted a matchstick for the first time, fourth time, third time, second time. When she saw goose coming up to her, that was second time. When the vision to satisfy her hunger came, that is second. First one was iron stove and second one was this. Next one, Jesse Owens was number A, an African American. Number B, a great long distance runner. Number C, a great German sportsman. Number D, an Aryan of superior race. So Jesse Owens was an Af African American. Number 24, Hitler believed in the number A, equality of all races, no, B, the superiority of the German race, the superiority of the English race, none of the above. He clearly believed in the Aryan supremacy theory, that is the superiority of the German race. Number 25, what happens every 7 years on Venus? Number A, the a rocket ship arrives with more uh, settlers. Number B, the sun shines for two hours. Yes, every seven years, the sun shines for two hours. Number 26, when the class sang songs about happiness and life and games, her lips barely moved. Which of the following words best describes Margaret's mood? Number A, jaunty. Number B, dolorous. Number C, Perky, number T, lively. Jaunty means cheerful. Perky also means very cheerful and uh, very energetic. And D is also lively. So, B, dolorous, that is sad. This is the correct option. Coming to number 27, what were the contents of the logged chest? Number A, silver and gold. Number B, turquoises and opals. Number C, diamonds and gold. Number D, platinum and turquoises. This is from the chapter the blue bead. So here the option number B will be the correct option. Next one. On the fateful day when the crocodile attacked the Gujar woman, Sibia had come to number A, collect dry paper grass to be dispatched to paper mills, number B, to graze the cattle, number C, to help her mother fill brass gharas, and number D, to find a blue bead for her necklace. Correct option will be A, to collect dry paper grass. 29. Sibia cries, something did. I found a blue bead for my necklace. Look, which of the following words best describes Sibia's mood? First number, forlorn. Forlorn is very sad and lonely. Obviously not. Number B, exultant. She was very exci excited and uh, enthusiastic and triumphant. Number C, feverish. Number D, whimpering. Obviously number B, exultant will be the correct option. Last one. Sibia lingered behind after the other women had left because number A, she didn't want to have to help her mother with preparing for evening will. Obviously not. This is not the correct option. Number B, she wanted to check if her little clay cups were still in the cave where she had left them. Yes, this is the correct option. That is why she was left behind. Okay, so here are uh, 15 from poem and 15 from prose MCQs. I hope you all have done it correctly. Tell me in the comment box how many MCQs of yours were correct. So keep calm, prepare well and be confident your exam will be good. See you soon. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.